Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Ride Giant here. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion about the emitter section in trap code particular. We're going to move forward with some other options in here after we've covered point, box, sphere, and grid emitters in the last lesson. Let's pick up with light emitters. Light emitters are tremendously powerful in trap code particular, and I highly recommend that you use them. So that said, what is a light emitter? Well, in short, what a light emitter is, is when we use a light in After Effects as the location for our particles in particular. In the last lesson, we talked about how a point emitter creates particles at a single point in space, and we define those points in space with an X, Y, and Z location. This is all good in theory, but as I'd like to create more complex animation paths, this 3D location isn't necessarily the easiest way to animate. The first thing I'm going to do is actually load a preset here. So I'm just going to go into my designer window, go to my motion graphics multi-system presets, and pick a preset like this one here, liquid gold. So as I hit apply, what I'd like to do is have the particles actually attach to a point on my text. Now let me disable my particles for a second. I am simply animating a layer in in 3D space. So this layer is 3D, and all it has on it is a Y rotation animation that starts from zero and animates to a slight angle like so. Inside here, there's a piece of text using the After Effects text generator. I've also got a camera, and there's a little bit of an animation on this. It starts in one position, close to the text, and then the second keyframe, it moves a little bit further away. So I'd like to create a sort of particle swirl motion that moves along with this text. Now if I was going to do this manually using the 3D location of my particle emitter, which uh, I should go up here and show my master system, using my position right here is actually going to be really difficult in terms of matching this animation. So I'm going to use a light emitter. So I'll go to Layer New and create a light. And for this case, I want to create a single point in space to follow, because you can see my emitter type is a point. So to mimic the look of that, I'm going to create a point light as my emitter. We can also create directional emitters, and I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. But for now, we'll use a single point. I'll leave the intensity at 100. And it's important to name the light correctly. By default, Particular wants to see the name of the light start with the word emitter. And I'll show you where that is defined. If I go into Particular, under Light Naming, if I click on Choose Names, you'll see right here, this is where I define how the light naming starts. So it's going to look for a 3D light that matches that name, which is emitter. And now, if I set the particular emitter type to a light, this will take one of the particle systems and move it to that light. If I go to the designer, you'll see that I've actually got multiple systems here working together, and each of these emitter types is defined independently. Now looking at these, there isn't much difference between some of these emitter types. So the, this one is a point emitter at 500 particles per second. This one's also a point emitter at 737 particles per second. There's not a whole lot of difference going on between these particle uh, emitters. So I'm actually going to remove each of these so that all four systems are using the master system light emitter right here. So if I hit apply, all four systems are going to be following the position of this light. Now to have this light follow the rotation of the text, I'm going to take the light and parent it to the text layer. So in the parent column, I'll click on the pick whip here, and target the text layer. Now I'm actually going to hold down shift, and what that's going to do is move the light to the same position of the text. This is handy because it makes everything aligned in X, Y, as well as Z, which is probably the most important thing right here. We want these to be in the same Z space. 
This has made our text disappear because we have a light source and the light source is at the exact same spot as the text. So basically we can't see it because it's not illuminated by the, by the light anymore. I could either disable lighting for that layer simply by tapping AA to show my material options and turn off accept lights for that layer. Or if I do want to use lighting, I can simply create an additional light source for the light. So I can go in here and perhaps create a spotlight and illuminate my text like so. So right now, the emitter is actually right in the center point. It's not actually going to be moving. So I'm going to go to the beginning here and move my emitter over to the left and top of the text. Now as I scrub forward in time, you'll see that the particles are now swirling around as the light emitter that's parented to the text moves around in a swirl motion. Keep in mind I can also animate that light, so if I go into my light emitter, hit P, and I'll create a position keyframe, I just hit Alt or Option P, and at the end here, I'll move this down just a little bit. So relative to this light, it is only moving from here to here, but because it's parented, it will move down in a swirling kind of motion. Another cool thing that we can do is control the number of particles per second using the um, light emitter intensity. So if I go here, turn up the intensity, we can have a lot more particles in there. So let's say I set this to 350, and then just a little bit before the animation comes to a rest, I can set a keyframe for the intensity, and then set another one to zero. So this will turn our particles all the way down to zero. Now you might notice that the particles are always on top of the text layer. This is just kind of a, an After Effects thing where 3D space of a plugin is not unified with the 3D space of an After Effects layer. But Particular has one trick up its sleeve. Jumping down to a different section here, under Visibility, we have this thing called Obscuration Layer, and I can set this to a layer that I would like the particles to interact with. So essentially, I want the particles to disappear if they are behind the text. So it, as we can see, towards the beginning, as the particles are behind the text, they are composited behind the text. And as this spins back around towards the front, we have particles in front. So that is one option that you've got available to you in the visibility section to make particles appear to go behind an object. I wanted to take one minute to talk about how your light type can affect your particle emitter. Right now we're using a point light, and this was useful because we wanted to generate particles from a point in space. But I can change this emitter to a spotlight. The spotlight contains not only direction, but also something called its cone angle. So if I hit AA to look at my light options in here we have a cone angle. This is the width of the light. These values can be used by particular to dictate direction spread and XYZ emitter rotation. In fact, when I set the emitter type to lights, this set of values will be grayed out because it is taking those values from the light itself. Now, XYZ rotation and direction spread weren't an issue when we're using a point emitter because point emitters don't have a direction spread, nor do they have a rotation. They emit in all directions. But when I'm using a light emitter, I can set my direction to directional, and I'll turn up the velocity so this becomes a little bit more easy to see. We can see that particles are now moving in the direction that the light emitter is pointing. If I change the overall angle of the light, the particles will move. Also, the cone angle will dictate the direction spread. So I think that about does it for light emitters. We're going to go into a new type of emitter next time, which is called a layer emitter. So my name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next lesson.